Welcome back to wagertalk.com. We're going to head to the Western Conference Finals. A lot of people think this is actually the NBA Finals, the Western Conference Finals with the Rockets and Golden State. I'm going to come to you first, Ralph. You, this game last night, and I'm going to be honest, and I think pretty much all three of us, we probably were watching more hot white. Well, Brian, you were actually at the game, so you didn't have a choice. I was at home. I couldn't take my eyes off of the Golden Knights game. Uh, so I had to dig into this one and look at highlights afterwards. But I did have a play on the Rockets last night, and they were able to even up the series. A lot of the talk after game one was the fact that, okay, what's Houston do now? They played all year long, pedal to the metal to get that number one seed, where Golden State – you know, they conceded it. When Curry got hurt in that last month of the season, they didn't care. They, they were happy to come in here with the two seed. And the Rockets played their guts out all season to secure the best record. And then home court's gone in one game. Everybody said, what's their psyche going to be? You know, including me. I mean, we do talk radio. That's a common thing. What do you, you know, how do you take it that they were able to win, but win in a convincing fashion that they did? Well, they showed us why they're the second best team in the NBA. You have the second best team in the NBA at home, you know, off a loss. And that's when teams rebound. You know, everyone knows Harden and everyone knows CP3. But, you know, Eric Gordon, P.J. Tucker and Trevor Aresia were incredible. Combined 23 of 33 shooting. And anytime you're going to get that, uh, that kind of support from your other guys, we talk about the other guys in the other video, um, the, that's a young, hungry group that knows how to play offense and defense. That's the difference between this Houston team. Now, for those that want to back Houston in game three, I can tell you this. James Harden is going to shoot three of fifth better than 3 of 15 from three-point land. So for Houston to have the win they had and Harden only go 3 of 15 from three-point land, that shows you how much better the Rockets can play. But on the reverse, if you want to back Golden State, I can tell you Curry's not going to shoot one of eight from three-pointers at home in game three. You know, you look at the Rockets and, and you look at what you're getting. You're getting a deep team that has the superstar, that has the go-to, and they've only been an away dog four times this year. Now, they did go one and three straight up in ATS, but they did win here at Golden State in the season opener as a dog outright way back in um, October when the season started. So, again, a rare situation when they're a dog only four times. So I think the points will be at a premium, and I think I know everyone expects Golden State to bounce back. But I think Houston can keep this game three close with the extra rest in between. Brian, we talked just before we went on air with this video, we talked about the zigzag. And it's something that 10 years ago, you know, it was money. You know, you just automatically took the team that lost, you know, and you were making money. Vegas adjusted to that, you know, with the lines and such. But the one thing and over the last several years, it's basically been a 500 thing when the season was done with the playoffs. But the one area where it has still worked, and that's the reason that I was on Houston in game two, is when the team you're supposed to take in the zigzag, which was the Rockets, looks so hard to swallow after the way they played that first game. That's the one where these zigzags are working because, one, I don't think Vegas over-adjusts them. You know, the Rockets were the same number, basically, that they were in game one. How many times have you seen in the playoffs so far a big adjustment to game two, the team that needed that game, and they didn't do it to the Rockets. And for me, when I see that, that's the buy sign for me. Well, it's a buy sign when you see two teams that are pretty equal in talent. Um, a lot of people still use a zigzag for teams that are not equal in talent, and, and the teams just want to win the game. So it, it means more in this case. Um, but there's going to be a lot of differentials in this series, a lot, a lot of ups and downs, because both teams shoot so many three-pointers. Uh, I think Houston shot 42 three-pointers in the last game. When you're shooting that many three-pointers, if somebody gets real hot, they're going to win by 20. If they're cold, the other team's going to win by 20. So don't buy into, you know, this team crushed them in this game or this team crushed them in this game, because if you look at the three-pointers, that's the telling sign. Now, the one thing for Houston that has the advantage here is they could drive the lane. They've got guys that could drive the lane on, on Golden State and get their bigs in foul trouble. Uh, and Curry, as we saw, they tried, to, they tried to isolate Curry a little bit because of his defensive flaws. Uh, he actually is a pretty good defensive player, but because of his size, they're starting to back him down 
and do those kind of things to Curry, which is what they, everybody should be doing. And making him work harder makes it harder for him on the other side. And that's what they did there. But uh, I, I, I think Golden State wins this game. I haven't decided on who I think is going to cover. You uh, give you a few numbers here. One, Houston shot 51% for the game. When the Warriors shoot 51, you know, let somebody shoot over 50%. That's only happened one time so far in the playoffs uh, since they flipped the switch and went into playoff mode. That was against the Pelicans, the game that the Pelicans won. Well, the next game, the Pelicans shot 36%. The Warriors came to play in the next game, and I think you're going to see that defensive effort in this next game. And I agree with you on Curry. They need to be physical with Curry, make him work you know, defense uh, and be physical because of his size. And it also, if they attack that way, I think it's going to affect the total. We got the high you know, result in the other game, and because I think, honestly, after Golden State took the first game, don't you think mentally a little bit? That's what they wanted. They wanted to go into Houston. Their goal was to take one game and get home court advantage. Well, when they got it, they just didn't have that same intensity in game two. I think you're going to see it in game three. I don't want to take the Warriors in game three, even though I think they win the game. I don't want to lay this many points to the Rockets. But I'm going to look to the total, and I think the total will continue to creep up towards game day because people are going to look at game two and look at the points that the Rockets did score. And when you say Houston and Golden State, naturally you think of high-scoring games, but these teams really haven't played high-scoring games during the season. I'm looking at the under in this one, and I'll give you two stats here. Houston, 7-0 and to the under in road games after playing three consecutive home games this season. Houston, 9-1 and in road games after they played a combined score of 215 points or more uh, in two straight games this season. So I'm going to go ahead, take the under for me. And you remember game one was an under until they went foul crazy right. the last couple minutes or else you would be sitting at an under and an over and it wouldn't it, be that, that crazy. That one depended when you bet it because it was like it right landed, at the number. It you landed won. right at the number in uh, Harden's last one that missed at the buzzer. You know, saved it. If you bet it late, you lost the over. Um, you, you cashed the under. But if you bet it early, it went it went over. I got one of Brian's my pet peeves with the NBA. And you look at these playoffs when we talk about the zigzag and what happens. You know, I think part of the zigzag too is the zigzag used to work more because they used to play more games. You know, you look at baseball the regular season. The playoffs are just like baseball with maybe one extra day in there. You know, you play every day. Football, you play on Sunday. You got seven days off. The playoffs are seven days off. Hockey, you play every other day. That's almost like the regular season. In, in basketball, you have a lot of back-to-backs. You have three games and four nights. In the playoffs, you have three games and nine nights. It's crazy how much different the playoffs are than the regular season, which is so silly. I mean, it should be either make the regular season like the playoffs and cut some games or make the playoffs like the regular season so we're getting the same numbers in the regular season as the postseason. They put those extra games in to make sure you've got the Saturday and Sunday for uh, Understood. Well, the, the reason they do it is because they want the star players to play more. And in the playoffs, you have a shortened bench, and they want to make sure all the star players are healthy enough to play the next game. But as you pointed out, we talked about this in videos before, you're supposed to have your best teams, your best teams, yeah. not best players. And if you're going all season long and you're playing three, four games a week, then you get to the playoffs and you're playing two games a week, that's, that's different. That's a different game than what they played before. So I, I, It know. helps Cleveland, but I would still rather have it like the regular season where you're playing back-to-back -back games. And when you have those two games at home, I understand the road trip and having the day off. you got to get the media there and the hotels. But when you're at home, play those back-to-back -back games. That's I, what basketball is about. You, know, you see the shape I'm in. I could walk. From Boston to Cleveland faster than these two teams are playing again, <laughs> which tells you how much time they have between them. I don't know. I think I, I think I still might. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me a challenge. <laughs> we might have to see what the odds are on that one. I don't know. I think I want to get a little out of action. Four days? Yeah, I'll, I'll bet no. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if he passes a couple hamburger joints and this and that. He's going to lose time. He's going to be making stops. Come on. Wow. Oh. All right, guys. Hey. Don't forget, a couple of offers at Wager Talk we have every week. Mondays, it's Manic Monday. $9, you can get any pick at Wager Talk. All of the picks, that includes 5% plays. Don't miss it. Every Monday, $9 Monday, Manic Mondays. And then on Tuesday, we pick one capper, 
Hottest guy we got going. We'll offer a best bet from him and give it to you for just $2. If you've never been a customer of Wager Talk, there's no better time to do it on than $2 Tuesday. Or if it's a new capper you've never tried, great way to check him out. Every week, $2 Tuesday, see who the capper is. Guys, if you like these videos, do us a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to share it with all your friends. We'll be back with more here at Wager Talk.